put the ethyl tea in my office 11 years ago, and I've done between four and 5,000 eyes in probably half that number of patients. I use it as primary therapy, and most patients, when it's explained correctly, do opt for SLT instead of drops. And you know the benefits are, are fairly obvious. The, the expense and bother of eye drops and the local and systemic side effects of the eye drops are not anything that patients look forward to. And with an SLT, when it works, and it's, that's a definite majority, then they get pressure control without the bother, the expense, and the side effects. And as adjunctive therapy, I mean, some people need lower pressures than we can get with drops and lower pressures than we can get with SLT alone, and that's when we do both. Well, I, the benefits to the patients, uh, besides less cost and less bother, are that, um, I mean, eye drops, there's a, a tremendous and personally unknowable problem with compliance. With SLT, when it works, it works 24-7, and there's, there's no issues of compliance, and uh, they've, they've got the control they need to save their nerve. The, the benefits of SLT over medications uh, are are primarily the convenience, lack of expense, lack of side effects, and lack of that big unknowable issue with, with compliance with the medications. Yes, when I first got the laser, I was told to do subthreshold treatment uh, on a 180 uh, on half the angle. And I did that, and I would turn it up until I had champagne bubbles, and then I would turn it down until I had no bubbles or almost no bubbles. The, there, there were patients whose pressures responded to that light treatment, but the, the responses were um, uh, disappointing, to say the least. And so I started sneaking the 180 up to, to 220 and, and started turning the power up to where it was super threshold treatment, and, and the results kept getting better. And I discussed this with Mark Latina, and he agreed at the time, this was 2004, uh, at the ASCRS meeting, uh, he says, I think we've been under-treating patients for years. And if you, you talk to, to experienced users, uh, the majority of people are doing 360s, and they're definitely doing super threshold treatment to where they say, see champagne bubbles on every shot or nearly every shot. And the results were, were dramatically better when I hit it hard enough. Well, it should go without saying, but you have to hit the trabeculum meshwork. And uh, <clears throat> it is a very big spot size. You're sort of painting the angle. And if you hit a structure that you didn't intend to hit, it doesn't leave any damage behind. So in a sense, it's a forgiving laser. But some people have unusual angles. Some people have uh, uh, variable pigment and, and skip areas where there is no pigment. And you, you have to keep oriented and you have to uh, avoid treating a pigmented Swalby's line or uh, in a very lightly pigmented angle. Um, sometimes the only brown thing back there is the ciliary body band and you know that, that's not where you want to treat. So you have to treat the trabeculum meshwork. I overlap spots. I use enough spots to where I've, I've treated the angle and I, I do not worry about retreating. If, if the patient moves and I lose my place, I, I go back a little bit. I overlap shots a bit, so I'm doing about 200 shots uh, in the angle. And I started a power of about one, but I, I pay almost no attention to the numbers. I, I look at the response. I start in the inferior angle, most patients have pigment there, and I get a power that is giving me champagne bubbles, and as I go um, around and I come to lightly pigmented uh, areas, I will turn the power up. And as I come to uh, another area with good trabecular pigment, I will turn it back if I'm getting a robust response. And um, so I, I paint the whole thing. I use enough power, power to be confident that I'm doing something. And the results have been dramatic. I mean, in, in patients never on medication, 20% 
is a uh, reduction in pressure is a success, and 19 is a failure. You have to have a cutoff somewhere. And using that criteria, people on no meds or one med, 75% of them will have at least a 20% reduction in pressure with this protocol. Average reduction was 34% in my first um, uh, thousand patients. And, um, and an another unusual group is the people that I, I could not see the angle well just because of uh, convex peripheral iris or something like that. I would do an iridotomy first and then treat them later. And we, we analyzed them as a separate group and they, their mean pressure reduction uh, was not 34%, it was 44%. So doing the iridotomy and adding a, a properly done SLT, that was the group that, whose pressures went down the most. I absolutely feel it's the standard of care in this country. And when you consider uh, the, the number of people in the world who have glaucoma who are not going to have access to ongoing drops, um, and the ease and speed with which this can be done in, in an amazing variety of settings, I, I, I see this being deployed across the world as, as the ideal first treatment for glaucoma, and that will allow a lot of people to be treated that there's actually no way that they can be treated with drops. Mm -hmm.